जय राधा माधवा कुंज Hari Ram, 
Om Agyan Timirandasya Ganajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manovi Stam Stapditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadati Swam Padanti Kam Vande Ham Shiguro Shiuta Padekamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Sha Si Rupam Sagrajatam Sahaganad Raganatam Vitam Tam Sujivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Jaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Sha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dean of Hindu Jagatvate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostite Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneswari Vishavanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhisya Sindhu Bevaja Paditanam Bhavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaurabhaktivya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Sela Prabhu Bhariki So this morning we spoke for three hours. So today we'll try to say something different. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ajanu Lambati Bujo Kanakama Daso Sankirtanai Papitaro Kamalaya Takso Vishwam Baro Dvija Baro Yugadharma Falo Vande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Avataro Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityanando Sano Dido Gauraya Pushpanvanto Chitta Sando Tamo Nudo Panchatadva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sravupa Kam Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam So Lord Chaitanya is Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Vadayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namari Gauda Tristana Maha He is Krishna himself but he's in the mood of his own pure devotee Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahyanya. The absolute truth consists of both Krishna and his internal energy, Ladini Shakti, which manifests in the form of Srimati Radharani. So that is the absolute truth, Radha Krishna. There's nothing higher than that, and there's nothing that is equal to that. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come in a combined form of Radha and Krishna. He is Krishna, but he is also in a different mood of Krishna. He is not Krishna who is accepting worship. He is ex he's Krishna who is teaching how to worship in the mood of his own internal energy, Srimati Radharani. So that is the manifestation of mercy given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he is called Chana Avatar. It means that he is not visible or not accepting the role as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is in his own Leela as a pure devotee to himself to worship himself in the mood of his pure devotee. And not only does he worship, but he also teaches that worship to all of us. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was performing his various leelas, he would never like to be referred to as the Supreme. He would block his ears. If someone called him the Supreme or the Absolute Truth, he would say, no, 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 I am simply a a devotee of the Lord. I am not the Lord. Although he was the Lord, he was playing the role of a devotee, but he was teaching by refusing to accept the role of the Supreme Lord that the living entity in the material world is Jivar Sarupai Krishnera Nityadas, that the living entity is the eternal servant of the Lord. And therefore, in the mood of service, one cannot become the Supreme. Sometimes we hear people perform austerities, penances, and very strict sadhana, and then they declare themselves that I have become the Supreme. <laughs> now this is uh, completely contrary to the absolute principle of truth, and it's pretentious, and it's another form of cheating. <laughs> So the Lord wanted to teach through that example that the living entity in the material world is simply 
the servant of the Lord and not the Lord himself. And so when he was associating with his devotees in various types of leelas, particularly in his kirtan leela, he would always keep that mood of being the servant of the Lord, a great devotee of the Lord, but never accepting the role of the Lord. But one time, which is a very special occasion, it happened only once in Lord Chaitanya's leela, what he would do, he would come many times to the house of Srivas Thakur, and he would indicate, let us begin kirtan. So the Lord would glance at everyone, and then they would understand, oh, the Lord wants to begin kirtan. So they would begin kirtan, and sometimes the Lord would dance. And then sometimes he would go onto the throne of Lord Vishnu, the deity being worshipped by Srivas in his home, and he would sit there, but in his ecstasies. But now, one particular occasion, the Lord did something completely different. <laughs> and this is called the Maha Prakash Leela, where the Lord for 21 hours continuously played the role of who he actually is. <clears throat> He came in, he glanced around at all his devotees. He in, they indicated kirtan, but this time not in ecstasy, but he simply went over to the throne, took the shalagrams off the altar, placed them on his lap, sit on the throne, and then he said, worship me. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the devotees were so happy. They always wanted to worship the Lord, but they couldn't, because he would not allow that. Now he's playing the role, or actually accepting his actual role, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so the worship began as the kirtan, and then he said, begin the bathing ceremony. So just like we sing every night, Ki bajayo jaya ghodha chande aroti ke soho bham That particular bhajan song and glorification came from this particular pastime. And now the devotees became excited, so they start bringing pots of water from the Ganges, straining the water and putting it in, back into the pots and giving it to, the, to Advaita Acharya, Lord Nityananda, and a few of the more confidential devotees who were standing next to the Lord, and the Lord was accepting Abhishek. <laughs> and they were singing various songs in glorification of the Lord according to the principle of Abhishek. So this went on for some time. And everyone was happy. <laughs> everyone was happy seeing the Lord being in the role of the Lord. And so, after some time, when the Abhishek was going on and they were singing the Gorarti song, Lord Chaitanya called Srivas. He said, Hey, Srivas, who's that? And then Srivas came and said, My Lord, who is that lady who's standing way in the back, filling the pots? She looks like a very nice lady. She's working so nicely. Who is she? Oh, that is my maidservant. Her name is Dukey. And Dukey means sad, <laughs> unhappy. <laughs> and so, Lord Chaitanya said, Oh, Dukey! We will now give her a new name. Suki. <laughs> so he initiated her right there. Now because she was serving so nicely, she was way in the back. She was not wanting to come up and be noticed. She simply wanted to assist the other devotees when they were bathing the Lord. So Lord Chaitanya appreciated that, the mood of Das, Das, Anudas. Servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord's servant. 
that she took this humble position just to serve the devotees. And because Lord Chaitanya Tanya is Patita Pavan, he noticed her and by that notice he blessed her and gave her the name Suki. <laughs> now the worship is going on and then the Lord said, bring the, bring the boga, bring the food. So everyone was running around, they were getting fruit, and they were getting various types of vegetables, and they were getting different kinds of roots and various types of herbs, and they were collecting milk products and ghee and yogurt and so many things, and they were bringing it to the Lord. And the Lord said, bring more, bring more. And as they were bringing it, he was eating everything. And they were looking. Everything was coming, and then in a few seconds, it was gone. <laughs> the Lord ate everything they brought, and then they were going out trying to find more. And they were bringing more yogurt, more milk, more ghee, and more fruit, and so many things. And the Lord was just eating everything. And he kept saying, more. <laughs> So in the root, mo, in the, in another name from Lord Chaitanya is Vishwambar. Vishwambar means one who can eat the whole universe. <laughs> so for him, it was just a small snack, and that's all it was. <laughs> and, he, and the devotees were so happy, they were getting a chance to bathe him, they were getting a chance to worship him, they were getting a chance to feed him. They were all so happy. And this went on for so many hours, Finally, as the evening came, the Lord was completely satisfied, and now he wanted to reciprocate the devotees' love. So he started turning to the devotees and asking them for benedictions. Whatever you want, ask for me. And he was giving out benedictions, blessings to anyone, everyone. Everyone was so happy. At one point, he turned to Srivas Dakor. He said, hey, Srivas, do you remember? how much you love Bhagavatam, and then you used to go to hear from Devananda Pandit, who used to recite Srimad Bhagavatam along with many of his followers, and you would go to hear it because you understood that every line of Bhagavatam is permeated with love of God. So you were listening, and as you were listening, you were going into ecstasy, and you were, in your ecstasy, you were forgetting where you were, who you are, but your ecstasy was causing disturbance to the other people who were listening. And they were thinking, what is this? So they took you, and they put you outside, and then Devananda Pandit, although he saw how his followers were mistreating you, he said nothing. And then when you came back to external consciousness, you were feeling unhappy, you shook the dust off, you went to your room, and you were feeling very, very sad. He said, at that time, I came, and I entered into your heart, and I spoke the words of Srimad Bhagavatam directly to you. And do you remember how you became happy and satisfied? And then you were feeling oh, love of God. He, the Lord said, that was me. <laughs> so the Lord actually blessed Sri Vastakor by coming into his heart when he was feeling so unhappy. The Lord then turned to Gangadas Narayan, Gang actually Gangadas Pandit. Yeah. And he said, Gangadas, do you remember? You were there with your family in Navadweep and it was late at night and the Islamic army was coming into the city and they were, everyone was running and you were very scared so you took your whole family and you started to run, and you were going towards the Ganges, trying to find a way to escape from Navadweep. But the Islamic army was following behind, and you were thinking, oh my God, this is the worst thing. Let me drown myself in the Ganges. If the army comes and they molest my family, what will I feel? I would this feel this is worse than death. And so you were praying, but then none of the boats were there. All the boatmen had gone. It was late at night, and you were all alone. And you're thinking what to do. 
But then I came. I came from Vaikuntha and I had a boat and I was rowing my boat and I said, please come into my boat. And you and your family, you came into my boat and I took you across the river. You wanted to give me some rupees, but I said, no, this is my service. <laughs> and I actually saved you from the, uh, t the horrors of being attacked by the Islamic army. When Ganga Das heard that, he became overwhelmed with ecstasy and he just fainted. So the Lord was reminding all of his devotees how he entered into his life when they needed him the most and he is always there. This is a very important principle of the Lord's relationship with his devotees. The Lord never leaves his devotee and the devotee never wants to forget about the Lord. And even if the Lord, the devotee forgets about the Lord and the devotee is in trouble, the Lord is always thinking how to save his or help his devotee. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu especially and also Lord Krishna, out of all the manifestations of the Godhead, had so much attraction and affection for their devotees that Lord Chaitanya used to say, my, my devotees are more dear to me than my own self. I would sacrifice everything just for the pleasure and for the happiness of my devotees. Mahaprabhu is very kind to his devotees and he showed that in so many wonderful leelas. Now he turned to the devotees. He said, there is one person. He lives a distance away. Go in that direction. His name is Kolavecha Sridhar. Kolavecha means banana salesman. So he sells bananas, go in that direction and you will listen, you will hear him crying. He's always chanting the holy names of the Lord. To bring him here. And so the devotees went and they were looking this way and they finally they came into the area where Kolavetra was and then they hear this loud sound of someone calling out to the Lord in, in great ecstasy and happiness. And he's chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So they came to Kolavesh and said, Chait Lord Chaitanya is here and he wants you to come and see him. Oh, Lord Chaitanya. And then he fe fainted in ecstasy. <laughs> So the devotees picked him up and walked him very slowly back to Lord Chaitanya. And then Lord Chaitanya was, and then Lord Chaitanya said, Sridhar, Sridhar, you have been my devotee for so many lifetimes. Do you remember how I used to come? You would sell bananas. You would take a banana tree and you would cut it up into different places. You would make different banana cups and banana leaves and banana plates and and you would sell them. I found a very good provider and I used to come to you and I would always ask you how much and you would quote a price and I would say too much, you're cheating the brahmanas. <laughs> it's not right. No, 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 actually you can go everywhere, you can find, you won't find a better price in Sridhar, you are very rich, you're hiding your wealth, someday I'll tell the whole world about it. Sridhar, no, 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 my Lord. And then the Lord would say, all right, how much? And then he would quote the price, the Lord said, actually, today I will take it for free. So he just grabbed it. <laughs> and Sridhar would say, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, no, no. And then he would try to grab it back. And the Lord Chaitanya would say, you're trying to take it back? <laughs> Sridhar, this is not you. <laughs> and so the Lord would tease him many times. Now Sridhar was such a, a devotee that whatever rupees, whatever he would make, he would divide it in half, keep half for himself and use the other half to worship Mother Ganga. And he had hardly anything. And his only occupation was just selling parts of the banana tree. And, uh, and so he could hardly find enough food and he would live in this very broken down little shack and he would make it out of some kind of wood and some tin and, 
and then it would rain, and when it would rain, the water would come inside his house. That's all he had. But he was happy. He didn't want anything. And he would chant the holy names of the Lord. And sometimes he would stay up all night and chant. And when he would chant all night, the neighbors would say, Ah, oh, Sridhar, he's making, he's crying again. He's got no food and his belly is hungry, so he's calling out in pain. Here, and they take a gourd and throw it at him. Here, eat this and shut up, you know. <laughs> and he wouldn't even pay attention to them. He would just continue chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. He had one possession. It was this iron pot. And it had so many holes in it. And he would use it for all his water needs. He would bathe in it. He would clean himself in it. And so many, he would wash things. He would just use that one pot. And it was broken down. It had all dents in it. And it was just... Uh, and Vrindavan Das Thakur, in describing this pot, he said, even the most desperate thief would not steal this pot. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't even look at it, <laughs> speaking about stealing. <laughs> and that was his only possession, except he had something else. And Lord Chaitanya said, you are wealthy, and someday I'm going to tell the world about your wealth. You... I don't have any, whatever you see, this is what I got. No, no, you're hiding it and I'm going to reveal it. So when Sridhar was there, the Lord said, Sridhar, and when he saw Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was effulgent. And he was in the mood of the Supreme Lord. And so that same Nimai Pandit who would come and harass him and take his banana leaves and not pay him enough for the price, he, now he understood that was the Supreme Lord himself. So he fainted in ecstasy. Then he got back up and, and he's standing there with folded hands, just offering prayers to the Lord. And the Lord said, Sridhar, offer me some prayers. Sridhar said, I am illiterate. I don't know how to speak. And then the Lord signaled to Saraswati, the goddess of fortune, to appear on his tongue and he start offering beautiful prayers glorifying Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Lord Chaitanya as the incarnation of Krishna to show complete mercy and compassion to the fallen souls of this age. And for, for, for a long time he was just glorifying the Lord so nicely. At the end the Lord said, Sridhar, I want to give you a benediction. My Lord, I'm happy. There's nothing I want. But take something. I'll give you a nice wife. I'll give you some wealth. Not only give you a wealth, I'll give you a, a planet. <laughs> Your own planet. And Sridhar said, My Lord, I'm happy. Why do you want to disturb that? <laughs> You get the message? <laughs> so, he was thinking, all this stuff, what am I going to do with it? I just want to chant Hare Krishna that's all, and worship the Lord. And so, in so many ways, the Lord blessed him and Sridhar was so happy. And then, the Lord turned to Advaita Acharya and said, no, actually, he turned to Srila Haridas Thakur. He said, Haridas, you remember when those torturers had tied you up and they were beating you and, and dragging you through different marketplaces and they were, they were whipping you very severely and you were just chanting the holy name and you were praying for their deliverance. But I could not tolerate it. I became so upset seeing what they were doing to you. And I wanted to immediately kill them. So I came from Vaikuntha with my chakra. And I was just about to release my chakra and kill them, both of them. But your prayers were so strong. You were feeling so much compassion for them that my chakra would not move from my hand. 
But I was thinking, I have to do something to help you. So I took my body and I put my body on top of your body and I accepted the beating on your behalf. And then the Lord said, look. And he took off his charter and turned around and all the whip marks that were given to Haridas were now on the back of Lord Chaitanya. And when Haridas saw that, he fainted. <laughs> he couldn't. And then finally he came back to consciousness. And the Lord just started to glorify Srila Haridas as the Namacharya who chants 333,333 names of God every day, which is 192 rounds a day. And not only that, he used to preach Krishna consciousness. In fact, he would go from place to place and try to inspire people to accept the holy names of the Lord. He was not happy simply chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra himself. Although he was self-satisfied and on the highest spiritual platform, he still wanted to give Krishna consciousness to everyone and anyone. And so, because of that, he had risked his life and he was captured by the Islamic ruler at the time and then sent to that punishment. But he didn't care. He just wanted to show... And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission is uh, patita pava hetu tava avatar mosamo potita pava napai payar that to show compassion to the fallen conditioned souls by giving them the opportunity to hear the glories of the Lord and simply by hearing the glories of Lord Srinbata Svakata Krishna Shravan Punya Shravana Kirtanaha Ridyanto sto abhadrani vidhno tisuhit satam. The heart becomes purified, the heart becomes cleansed, and then Krishna manifests himself in the heart of that pure, into that heart of that pure devotee, simply by hearing and chanting the, his glories. And the essence of hearing and chanting of the glories of the Lord is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It is powerful. The holy name is so powerful. Sometimes we just chant, we do our 16 rounds, or we just, you know, all I have to do my chanting, and so we squeeze it in, and we have so many other things to do. But actually, it's Krishna manifests fully in his, in his holy name. Nam Nam Akardi Bahuda Nija Sarva Shakti Krishna's name is Krishna. It's non-different than Krishna. And he is fully manifested in that name. And due to the due to the desire and the faith that the devotee has in chanting the holy names of the Lord, the Lord reveals himself in the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So in this age there is no other religion than chanting Hare Krishna Hare. Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. And Mahabrabhu demonstrated that, he taught it, and he inspired others to teach it to others also. That's Mahabrabhu's mercy. And so he glorified Srila Haridas Thakur, because Srila Haridas Thakur was Namacharya. He empowered Srila Haridas Thakur to teach the glories of the Holy Name by accepting the service of chanting 24 hours a day. And Srila Prabhupada writes in many of his statements in the Bhagavatam and in other places, we should chant Satatam Kirtayan Tomam always. By chanting the holy names of the Lord, you are completely free from the effects of the material energy. Material energy cannot touch one who is absorbed in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It is so powerful, it gives complete protection. It elevates one's consciousness. It brings one in connection with Krishna and in devotion. And it brings one to perfectional stage where one can actually qualify themselves to return back to home, back to God. Simply by purifying ourselves through chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. 
Now, there is one other aspect of Lord Chaitanya's mission, and that is Vaishnav Seva. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya also taught that, that to serve the Vaishnavas means the highest form of service that one can render to the Supreme Lord. Krishna says in the Adi Purana, he says, those who say they are my devotee, they are not my devotee. Those who say they are a devotee of my devotee, they are actually my devotee. So worship of the Lord means worship of those who are worshiping the Lord. That is the highest form of service. And so Vaishnava, Lord Chaitanya, he is Krishna himself. And he taught by his own example how he would serve his devotees. After he received initiation from uh, Ishwara Puri, he came back to Navadweep after coming from Gaya, and he was completely different. He was before the arrogant scholar of Navadweep. Now he was a humble Vaishnava. And what did he do? He looked, he looked for opportunities to serve his devotees. He would go, he would take their clothes that needed washing, he would wash them. And then he would hang them, and then he would fold them, and then he would return them to the devotees. And then sometimes he would get their prasadam for them. In so many ways he did menial, menial service. Just to show that this is the, this is the business of a devotee, is to serve the devotees. Now although he is the Supreme Lord, he has no need to act in that way, but to teach the world. He accepted that role as a humble Vaishnava, as in the mood of instructing him, everyone in the science of bhakti. And the third principle of Lord Chaitanya's movement is Jivadoya. <laughs> Jivadoya. Jiva refers to the living entities, and Doya means mercy. So showing mercy to the other living entities means to, ex to give Krishna consciousness to others. They say that if there's something in your life that is very wonderful, auspicious, something that you have found satisfaction, happiness in, then naturally you want to share that with others. It becomes a natural feature of the living entities. Therefore, the, mu the human form of life is called paropaka. Paropaka means to do good to others. And so people are trying to do good to each other in different ways. They're opening up various ways to feed people who need food, uh, various types of establishments where people can find places to reside, uh, also distributing clothing and medical needs, various types of ways. And these are all nice and they're also needed. But these are also temporary. And in due course of time, the effects have to be continued, otherwise the same problem exists. But when you give people transcendental knowledge, then they can actually solve their own problems. Transcendental knowledge is the highest form of compassion. And what is that knowledge? You're not this body. <laughs> Who are you? Jivar Surupaya Krishnaya Nityadas. To know you're not that body is not enough. You have to know who you are. And we are the eternal. And that's, it's not just at certain time and place or in this particular life. Eternal servant of Krishna. Life after life after life. And to reach the perfection of life means to perfect our service and go back to Godhead and serve Krishna in the spiritual world where life is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of unlimited happiness. That is our birthright. And so to share that knowledge with others is the greatest form of compassion or the greatest form of welfare work because everyone is suffering. People think, well, if I get more money, I'll be happy. If I go to this place, and uh, uh, then this place will give me satisfaction. If I can just be with that person, I'll be happy, or if I can uh, get some position, I'll be happy. So met people are making plans, but who's happy? <laughs> the plan making keeps going on. If everyone was happy, there'd be no need for plan making, right? <laughs> They've been making plans for how many millions of years? If I just do this or get this or go here, 
but ultimately it, because it doesn't satisfy the soul it, doesn't, it, it may give some temporary relief to the suffering and material energy but it cannot give the satisfaction that the soul is looking for and so one who for one who gives knowledge about the eternal relationship between the living entity and the Lord is doing the highest welfare work and by doing that not only is that person benefited but you are benefited in such a way that Krishna recognizes you it says that when you give Krishna conscious to others you immediately get recognized by Krishna immediately he said oh this devotee is trying to help others become my devotee therefore I should give my special mercy to that and he does and that's Krishna so Mahaprabhu he's giving out blessings and benedictions to everyone then he turns to uh, Advaita Chari and he says Nadia Nada Nada do you remember you were reading the Bhagavad Gita and you came across that verse and you didn't understand the verse and you were thinking what is this I don't understand this verse and then you were hearing from others who were giving interpretations of the verse but you were not satisfied and then I entered into your heart and I told you actually what is the meaning of the verse I told you that you go to sleep tonight and in my in your dreams I will reveal that actual knowledge of that verse Sarvatas what is that verse Sarvatas city Huh? Sarvata Panipanasta Sarvato Shikshiro Mukam Sarvata Shishutimo Loke Sarvata Prabhishtati. Yeah. That the, everywhere his, his hands, eyes, and faces in this way the super soul exists. But that doesn't mean that the Lord is simply unmanifested in an all pervading sense. It means that he sits in the heart of all living entities. And Advaita Chari somehow or other could not understand the import of that verse. And the Lord appeared to him and told him, Tonight when you go to sleep, you will get the knowledge. So the Lord was reminding each and every one of his devotees how when they were struggling with something or in some difficult situation, the Lord was there to provide whatever they needed. And at one point, the devotees saw that the Lord was very magnanimous. So they start asking for benedictions, not for themselves, but for others. Oh, make my father a devotee make my friend a devotee give me love of God to you and the Lord was just so magnanimous he wasn't even he was he was refill, fulfilling the request of all the devotees and then they said Mukunda the devotee who sings for you every time give him love of God the Lord remained silent he didn't say anything he said, Mukunda, he's an offender. Oh, what? Ah, he's very dear to you. He, he's very, he's, whenever he sings Kirtan, you dance nicely. Mukunda, he is like a person who comes and he ha takes a straw in his mouth. He offers his prayers at your lotus feet. And then he takes a stick and beats you on the head. <laughs> And the devotees were shocked. They couldn't believe it. Now Mukunda is there and he's listening from a distance. And then the Lord said, I don't want to see Mukunda ever again. And the devotees were thinking, oh my God, we have to do something to save Mukunda. The Lord is very upset. And then they started to glorify Mukunda and say so many nice things. And then the Lord said, all right. He can see me after 10 million births. Then he can come back. And now Mukunda, when he heard that, he was thinking, oh, 10 million births. Only 10 million births. I will see. I will see. And he started to dance and started to sing. After 10 million births, I was, and the Lord started laughing. <laughs> he said, all right, bring him. <laughs> 
And then he, Mukunda came and the Lord bestowed his mercy on him. So what is the Lord teaching in this particular? Uh, what is actually Mukunda is showing that that Krishna consciousness requires patience. <laughs> Utsaham nishtayar darya tatta karma pravartana that enthusiasm determination and patience enthusiasm means to follow the principles carefully and act for the pleasure of the Lord determination means whenever there is difficulty or obstacles one is not deterred by these things one continues in their devotional service and patient means even after following enthusiasm and being determined one should wait for the mercy of the Lord one should expect the mercy of the Lord and know that in due course of time if I simply continue in my devotional service the Lord will bestow his special mercy upon me and so sometimes the devotees are made to suffer or go through difficulties just to purify them and to help them develop the quality of patience as patience is a great quality um, it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita that out of all of the feminine qualities it gives a listing of feminine qualities patience is considered one of the most important out of the, all the qualities like that so is it a masculine quality too yeah but not as much so women are generally more patient than men. Why? Because they have to deal with men. That's why they're more patient. That's why they're more, they're more patient. Correct? Yeah. Yes. So they have developed that patience. And they have to have children. So that's, you guys don't know anything about that. <laughs> I either do I, but I heard a few good. So, you know, it's a high, it's a high quality patience. So it actually attracts to the attention of the Lord. And Mukunda showed that, that he was willing to wait for the mercy to manifest again after a, such a long time. And so a devotee is not expecting anything from the Lord, but the opportunity to serve the Lord. Because by service, service is our nature. Service is our internal nature. It cannot be taken out of our existence. We are meant to serve. And if we are not serving the Lord, we're serving in some way in this material world. Every activity we perform is based on directing our service in one form or another. But one who serves the Lord actually has found the actual principle of existence. And patient, therefore, a devotee is not so much interested in receiving anything from the Lord, but the opportunity to serve the Lord. When Prahlad Maharaj, after Harani Kashipu, his father was killed by Lord Nisringadev, Lord Nisringadev was so happy with Prahlad, Prahlad had come and offered him a garland and the Lord took him on his lap and was showing so much affection for little Prahlad. And then the Lord said, I want to give you something. <laughs> The Lord is like that. He's very grateful. He wants to offer something to his devotee and he always asks the devotee, what do you want? Whatever you want. Now. And Prahlad said, I'm not a Vanik. I'm not a merchant. <laughs> I don't worship you in order to get something. I'm simply happy to serve you with love and devotion. That is my happiness. So Prahlad Maharaj was teaching that principle that the devotees simply find satisfaction in service and whatever comes by way of the service, which is the Lord's mercy, that is extra. But the devotee can find happiness in service alone because that is our nature. Jivaya Surupai Krishnera Nichidas. And then and then her then Lord Nishringade said to Prahlad, all right, uh, Take a benediction. Ask anything from me. And finally, first he said, well, liberate my father. And he, the Lord said, that's already done. <laughs> and then Prahlad was thinking, the Lord is very hard to convince. I can't get away from him. He wants to give me a benediction. So, all right. 
if you want to give me a benediction, let me stay in this material world and preach to the fools and rascals who have made a humbug civilization out of this little material existence. Uh, out of compassion for them, let me stay in this material world. When the Lord heard that, the Lord became overwhelmed with, with compassion towards Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was the personification of compassion to the fallen conditioned souls. And it says that when Prahlad, when her, when Srila uh, Haridas Thakur manifested his Leela, he had the spirit of Prahlad Maharaj. He was actually Lord Brahma who came again in that form of Haridas Thakur to teach the chanting of the holy name, but he had the spirit of compassion of Prahlad Maharaj. So the Lord is giving out benedicts. And then finally, someone said to the Lord, uh, my dear Lord, give your mother, Sachi Devi, love of God. And the Lord said, my mother, she's an offender. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they couldn't believe that. Your mother, she's the, you know, the mother of the universe. We worship her as, you know, she is the person who brought you into this world. You know, they were glorifying Sachi Mata in so many ways. And then they were confused. Why is the Lord speaking like that? And the Lord said, well, actually, my brother, Vishwaru, he lost all interest in the material world. My parents wanted to get him married, so he left home. But he would stay at the house of Advaita Charya, and he would hear from Advaita Charya. And after hearing from Advaita Charya for a long time, he simply left, took sannyas, and he has never been seen again. So my mother, when I was also going to the house of Advaita Charya and hearing from him, my mother was becoming very nervous and she was thinking, oh no, I already lost one son, I'm going to lose another one. It's Advaita Charya, he's, he's taking all my sons away. So he's not Advaita, he's Dvaita. <laughs> he's dualistic. But she didn't speak it, she just thought it. She just was thinking in her mind. So Lord Chaitanya, of course, he, he's the indwelling super soul in the hearts of all living entity. He knows everyone's thoughts. And so he said, therefore, my mother committed an offense to Advaita. She didn't. But why did he say that? Because he wanted to teach an example that one should not keep negative thoughts towards anyone at any time. Because thoughts, when they grow, they turn into activities, either in the form of speech or in the form of actual action. So I remember when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement, I was in New York City. And uh, I had one bhakta leader. He was really heavy. Ooh. He would chastise me all the time. And he used to say, kill that thought! <laughs> or it'll kill you! <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And, uh, uh, so, I wasn't thinking, he, somehow or other, he knew I was thinking of something I shouldn't be thinking of. <laughs> and he would always say that to me. So, and I always remembered that. <laughs> Even to this day, I can still hear him <laughs> chanting that mantra, kill that thought, you know, or it'll kill you. So actually it says, it says, actually it says in the Bhagavatam, that one is not responsible for negative thoughts in this age of Kali. It's in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 18th chapter. It's described that because Kali Yuga is so contaminated, and it's very difficult, impossible, not to be affected by the atmosphere of Kali Yuga. Therefore, even if one has negative thoughts, they're not accountable for that. But if one has positive or devotional thoughts, they get credit for that. 
This is the special feature of Kali Yuga. But the downside is that if negative thoughts remain, they grow. Just like some, there are people in the world that they call them the, the do-gooders. They want to remove evil from the world. So they're always trying to search out evil and trying to destroy it. But because they're so absorbed in that negative aspect of removing it, they also become affected by that. And they become, they start developing some of those qualities that they're trying to destroy. So as you associate, you become like. And so therefore, one should always keep thoughts that are beneficial or pleasant or in the mood of service. That is the idea. When negative thoughts come into the mind, one should immediately think of Krishna, chant the holy names of the Krishna, and pray to the Supreme Lord to help you again come back to devotional activities, those devotional thoughts. And so Lord Chaitanya was teaching that by using his mother as an example. She was not an offender, but he was making that point that one should not keep negative thoughts. And now the devotee said to Lord Chaitanya, well, how is your mother going to get relieved from this? And then Lord Chaitanya said, well, she has to take the dust of the lotus feet of Advaita Charya and place it on her head. Now, Dwayta Chari is there, <laughs> and he's listening. He's thinking, my foot dust on the head of the Supreme Personality of Godhead's mother? No way. <laughs> no way. And uh, so he wasn't going to give any dust. <laughs> but then the kirtan started. <laughs> And the kirtan became quite ecstatic, and Advaita fainted in ecstasy. And then Lord Chaitanya looked at his mother. <laughs> Here's the cue. <laughs> and she went over and took the dust. And So the Lord carried it all the way through to that point, that the dust of the lotus feet of a great personality can purify one's consciousness. Like that. The Lord performed that particular Leela, the Mahaprakash Leela, and he showed that how much he loved his devotees and how much he served his devotees and how much he was willing to please his devotees by accepting the role of the Supreme Lord and accepting the worship. That went on for 21 hours. And that's nicely described in Chaitanya Bhagavad by Vrindavan Das Thakur. The Lord was traveling in South India and he came to Kormashetra and he was met by one very pious Brahmana. The Brahmana actually recognized that this personality is a great personality and so he worshipped Lord Chaitanya and invited Lord Chaitanya to come and stay at his house. The Lord was pleased by the Brahmana, so he accepted the invitation. And he stayed at the house of the Brahmana for four days and nights, accepting worship and service. They cooked for him, they took care of all his personal needs. And after four days, the Lord was so pleased that he, was, he showed his happiness and satisfaction and blessing on the family. But then he was about to leave. And so he started to leave, and he was leaving. And the Brahmana was following behind. The Lord stopped and said, where are you going? He said, I'm going with you. He said, you have your family. He said, no, I'm going with you. <laughs> you can't leave your family. I want to go with you. The Lord said, actually, you go back and you stay with your family and you preach Krishna consciousness. Wherever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Wherever you meet, tell them about the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And if you simply do that, you will never lose my association. So this is instructions, for, especially for those in the household ashram, that there's, there's no need 
to change ashrams, one can preach Krishna consciousness anywhere and anywhere in every ashram. Because ashram simply means place of spiritual cultivation. That is the definition of the word ashram. So whether, you know, grihe taco, bone taco, sabda hari, bole da, no matter what position you are, you can preach, you can chant the holy names of the Lord. So the Lord inspired the Korma, he was known as the Korma Brahma, and he said, if you do that, then in due course of time you will again have my association. So the Lord taught that. And through the, his, this pastime with the Korma Brahmana. There was another person in Korma Shetra. His name was Vasudev. Now Vasudev was a leper. And prior to Lord's appearance in Korma Shetra, Vasudev was thinking, oh, I want to see the Lord. Because he was a leper, he knew he couldn't get the association of the Lord, but he wanted to see the Lord. So he was planning to see the Lord, but the Lord went through Korma Shetra so fast that uh, Vasudev missed the Lord, and then he, was, he learned later on that the Lord had already left. Now Vasudev was such a leper that his leprosy was so severe that he had sores all over his body and inside of the sores there were these worms living there. But Vasudev was very humble and he was a devotee of the Lord. And so when the, one of the worms would fall out of his body and onto the ground, he would think, oh, Krishna has given my, this, my body as a home for this living entity. So he would take it and put it back. That was his humility. But now he wanted to see the Lord. And the Lord just went and he missed him. And then when he heard that, that the Lord had already left, he was feeling so unhappy. Oh, I'm so wretched. I'm so unfortunate. Lord Chaitanya came through and I didn't even get a chance to see him. The Lord is the indwelling super soul in the hearts of all living entities. When he understood the mind of Vasudev, the Lord turned around and came back. He went right to the place of Vasudev. There's a beautiful picture illustrating this pastime. And he, came, he went right up to Vasudev and he embraced him. And as soon as he embraced Vasudev, you know, Lord is strong, so you can't get out of his embrace. <laughs> it's not possible. You know, he's like, he's two meters, <laughs> and he's, his arms are like, you know, shoo. And so Vasudev was really embarrassed that the Lord was embracing him, but he couldn't get out. <laughs> and then uh, all his leprosy immediately disappeared. And when he saw that, and of course he was feeling unhappy because the Lord had touched his body, which was so contaminated. And after Vasudev, you would think he was happy, but he wasn't. <laughs> he said, first he fainted, and after he got up, he said, my Lord, you have showed me favor. Now I'm going to become proud. Because you have showed me your favor, I will become proud. This is worse. So he was feeling unhappy because he knew that now everyone will know how his leprosy was cured and how and he will be glorified in getting special mercy from the Lord. And he didn't want that. So the Lord said to him, Vasudev, do one thing. He said, if you do this one thing, you will never become proud. He said, incessantly chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, 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 Hare. Just Continue to chant Krishna's name and you will never become proud. And that's a message that here's the way to keep away all of the bad qualities.
constantly chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. There's a story with Srila Prabhupada. We all know Srila Prabhupada is a, he is a manifestation of Krishna's mercy who appeared in this world to bring, you know, Sanatan Dharma to the entire world. Prabhupada was a, he was a Nitya Siddha who came to this world. So one time he was preaching the importance of chanting to a small group of people. And some of them were new people. And then one person, he said to Prabhupada, are you always chanting Hare Krishna? He asked him. Prabhupada said, come. Come behind me and put your ear on my back. So the boy, the man put his ear on his back and he could hear the Hare Krishna mantra going on inside of Prabhupada. Because a great soul, although they, they're, they're actually acting in so many ways externally, insert, internally they're always thinking of Krishna and they're always chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That's their internal mood, they never lose that. But they manifest themselves in different ways in order to interact in this material world. So Srila Prabhupada was one such person who taught the holy name, who chanted the holy name, who, enc who encouraged every, every living entity to chant Hare Krishna. He said, there is no greater form of worship of the Supreme Lord, no, no any greater form of happiness than to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare, Hare. So that is the most important message that we receive from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, chant Hare Krishna. No time, too many things to do, too many places to go, too much money that I don't have and I need to make, <laughs> too many parties that I've been invited to and I have to get to them. <laughs> yeah, so no time, no time, no time, no time, no time. <laughs> When Prabhupada was in Delhi before he came to America, he was publishing this little newsletter and and he would one or two pages and he would write some philosophical teachings and he would go to the printer, have it printed, and then he would take these newsletters, he would go to the tea stalls in Delhi and other places and he would, you know, come up to the people and say, please offer one pice and you can, you know. And so people would say, no time, no time. Swamiji, what you're doing is good. We got no time. <laughs> and so Prabhupada, in his next newsletter, he wrote an article called, No Time. <laughs> I'm giving the greatest opportunity for happiness and people to say, No time. <laughs> but time is Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, time I am. And so, if we make time for Krishna, Krishna expands our time. And you always have time when you serve the Lord. Sometimes devotees think, well, I'm, you know, I got so many things to do. I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this. And I give some time to Krishna. You know, I'm not that selfish. I always give a little time to Krishna. But, you know, life is what it is. We got so many responsibilities. Uh, I was at a program about a month ago, and they invited me to speak. Can you tell us, Swamiji, how to balance material and spiritual life so it is nice balance? I said, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking something that's impossible because the more time you give to material life, the more time it expands, and the more time you give to spiritual life, the more time that expands. <laughs> so where do you want to put your time? <laughs> so people think, well, you know, there must be some formula for balance. I say, yeah, just become Krishna conscious and Krishna will take care of everything else for you. Don't worry. He doesn't neglect his devotees. And that's the most important thing. 
So these are some of the wonderful pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Today is his appearance day. It's a very rare occasion. And for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we celebrate Lord Chaitanya's appearance as the most important day of the year. For us, it's like the new year. It's like in the calendar, January 1st, for most people in the world, they consider it a new year. In some places in India, Vasant Panchami has considered the new year. Some people say Janmashtami, that is the new year. But actually for us, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, those who are followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when Lord Chaitanya appears, that is the actual new year. And then everything becomes auspicious. So take, take as much time as you can and hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is that? Uh, what is that bhajan? Bhajan? Bhaja Gauranga, Laha Gauranga, Tau Ganga, Naham Rain, Ye Jana Gauranga, Gauren, Sei Mora Naham Rain, Bhaja Gauranga, Laha Gauranga, Laha Gauranga, Naham Rain, Ye Jana Goranga Madhe Sei Morana Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jiva Prabhu Pada. Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav, Hari Bhav, Nithai Ghor, Hari Bhav. Hare Tiger, Hare 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 Tiger, Hare 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 Thank you very much.